Welcome to ForexTV.com. Today is Wednesday, November 5th. I'm Kathleen Reddington with your New York Forex Market Buzz. The dollar strengthened overnight with the Obama victory, but has given up strength this morning against the majors. And now for a look at the latest headlines from the CEP News Desk. Democratic presidential candidate Barack Obama has been declared president-elect of the United States after reaching the 270 electoral college votes needed for a majority. Markets priced in an Obama win yesterday, but U.S. markets this morning opened lower while world financial markets were mixed. The ISM non-manufacturing index hit a new all-time low, falling nearly six points in October to 44.4. The consensus expected the index to fall to a 47 reading. Leading, leading the decline was a 10-point drop in business activity to 44.2, while new orders fell to 44 from the previous month's 50.8. And as retail gas prices fell, U.S. drivers are still staying off the road. There were tepid signs of increasing gasoline usage as year-over-year -year demand rose for the first time in many months. But according to data released today from the EIA, gasoline demand fell 2.3 percent year-over-year. Private non-agricultural employment in the United States fell by much more than consensus with a decline of 157,000 jobs in October. This marks the worst monthly decline since November of 2002. Today we are joined by Jim Hirecheck of Brewer Investment Group. Hi Jim, how are you today? Okay Kathleen, how are you? I'm alright. Uh, we got the official word last night and we now have a new president-elect in Barack Obama. Can you recap any changes it has had in the dollar throughout the morning and last night? Well, it looks like uh, the information uh, that he was going to win has been out for several weeks, and I think what the market's been doing is uh, for the past uh, seven days or so is going into a basing period uh, in, in the euro and the pound, and I think the dollar is uh, is reaching a, a, a top. Uh, yesterday's uh, action was uh, a good sign that uh, the markets uh, that the dollar was going to weaken. Um, we had seen a pattern where uh, the market had been, uh, the euro, for example, had been uh, rallying for one or two days and then making new lows three days later, and it looks like they're breaking that pattern. Also, uh, from my bigger uh, picture charts, the weekly charts, uh, the uh, market closed last Friday, the dollar closed last Friday in a weak position, and uh, that uh, is uh, providing the power this week uh, for a weaker dollar. All right, and we've seen the stock market give back its post-election bump and is now trading decidedly lower. What's going to move equities? Well, what's going to happen in the equities is uh, you're going to need to uh, really start getting uh, We're going to have to start looking at uh, better earnings. So it looks like we're going to have to wait until at least January before we see any kind of a earnings-driven uh, rally. Uh, so I think we're going to be range-bound for a while. Uh, right now you are looking at uh, rallies, um, that are taking place because of uh, some traders that just want to take a little bit more risk. Uh, the zero percent or or in that area in uh, money markets and treasury bills is just not enough. And I think that as the news got better, a few traders just uh, hiked up the percentage of their allocation in equities. But I don't see, uh, in a bigger picture, I don't see this market going uh, anywhere. Uh, usually I, I, I look at long-term signals off monthly and quarterly charts and uh, there's nothing there that's going to indicate the start of a 7- to 10-year bull run or anything like that. It just looks like uh, at the most we'll do a two-week rally and another retracement. But the days of uh, upside uh, trending uh, market is going to be uh, limited until at least January. All right, now as we touched on before, we've seen the dollar depreciate this morning, but it seems a little bit that it's based on job cuts and the contraction in the U.S. services sector. Are we going to see the dollar start tracking economic calendar reports again? I think we are. I think also uh, uh, the main indicator I always use are interest rates, and interest rates, uh, the Fed's kind of pinned. Uh, they, they use uh, the history of Japan uh, as an example, when they cut rates to zero uh, years ago, and how uh, you just get stuck in a in a rut and, and really can't get out, um, it becomes a situation where uh, money markets can't even afford to keep their doors open because they can't pay their expenses. So the Fed's, uh, although they're advertising that you know the market is advertising it, it's looking for a half a point cut in the next meeting in December. Uh, the Fed's pretty pretty limited at this point, and I think the market knows it. So. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be looking at uh, uh, the Fed walking a very uh, thin line here for the next couple of months with really nowhere to go after a half a point cut, and uh, the market's gonna start looking for uh, 
some of this money to start uh, becoming inflationary, this money that's been pumped into the market, it's got to start showing up in in form of uh, higher interest rates and higher commodities. So uh, we are getting a little bit of a change. The panic, the fear trading, the liquidation trading, the margin call trading, all those things are going away in the, in the normal correlations and uh, variances and, and you know, the statistics should start to uh, come out. So reports will become very, very important in the next couple of months. And there's still, uh, I want to touch on interest rates, there's still a lot of speculation about the upcoming ECB and BOE meetings. I feel like we've been hearing about them forever and you were just talking about interest rates now. Uh, the pound has really taken off against the yen and the euro uh, and with these BOE cuts, do you think that the BOE could take some a momentum away from the, the gain the, the pound has been having, like just based on the fact that these and rate cuts are coming? And where are we going forward with the pound? Well, what happens is uh, the initial uh, thrust up, uh, the traders overplay it. So when the uh, actual news comes out, they'll make the adjustment up. And uh, if you're shrewd enough, you'll just realize it's an adjustment. Sometimes people re think it's a change in the trend and start selling it and get caught. But I think what happens is the market, like we're having right now, uh, rallies, and then it, it, it's going to adjust after the rate cut. Um, I think that... The uh, ECB and the Bank of uh, England have to uh, cut rates just to uh, play ball with the other uh, countries. Um, I know they, they seem to wait a little bit longer than others, uh, but that's you know that's what they wanted to do. Um, but uh, they're gonna, rates are going to have to come down in those countries to get any kind of economic growth going. Uh, so I see uh, just looking at the trend, the pound can remain strong even if they cut the rates 50 basis points, because if you just lay the interest rates on top of each other, you'll see it's, it's, just, it's considered a higher yielding asset. So uh, there, anybody in the United States or, any, or Japan or other places will seek out those higher yielding assets just to make the difference on the spread. Problem I was talking about before, was if the dollar starts, if the uh, U.S. starts to lower rates under 1%, it, it, we may become a carry uh, country ourselves. Uh, the capital will leave here and go somewhere else where it can get deployed at a higher rate. So it's a very dangerous situation for the Fed and uh, the ECB and the and the pound still and the uh, Bank of England still have room to lower rates and not affect the currency too much. All right, Jim. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you, Kathleen. This has been your New York Forex Market Buzz with Jim Hirechick of Brew Investment Group. I'm Kathleen Reddington. Join us later this afternoon for PM Exchange right here on ForexTV.com.